Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Hayley Duro. So I am a methods teacher in Victoria and currently teaching year 11 and year 12. And hopefully you uh, learn a few tips and tricks or at least um, are reminded of some tips and tricks on the TI Inspire in terms of the topic trigonometric functions or circular functions. Um, so let's talk about TAS settings. I'm using the newer software um, and so if you do happen to have a brand new TAS, you can simply just click here and change your angle from radian to degree. However, if you are um, not in the, the latest TI Inspire TAS um, CX2 model, you would do that for your home, um, home button here. So you would go home and then into settings and in document settings, you really want to make sure that your angle is set to radian. Um, I know some students, you know, want to flip back and forth between degree and radian, particularly maybe if you're using a calculator for your physics homework or something like that. Um, I would encourage you just to be safe to just stay in radian. And I'm just going to show you how you can convert an angle um, into degrees very quickly. So uh, I'll add a math box here, but you could be doing this in a normal calculator page. Um, imagine that you have an angle uh, something like pi on 6, we'll do something familiar. Um, now that's pi on 6. If you wanted to convert it very quickly to decimals, uh, this catalog button, which is the little book, two, two buttons next to nine, um, there's an option in this list for decimal degrees. So if you um, click DD, it will convert your answer very quickly into uh, degrees. So that's really handy um, if you're working in a normal calculator page and you get an answer in um, radian and you just want to convert that to degrees, it will convert it for you. Um, and likewise, if you had um, something in, in radian here and you wanted it in degrees, minutes and seconds, um, which our physics students, I guess, might want sometimes, um, there's an option for degrees, minutes and seconds in this list as well. It's a bit further down because the list is alphabetical and it will convert it into degrees, minutes and seconds. So um, that would be my advice. Just leave it in radian and know how to convert. Okay, let's jump into um, some examples, solving trig equations. Uh, we've all seen equations such as this one here, show something fairly basic. Um, and hopefully we know that in a, um, in a calculator we can use our solve function. Now I'm just going to split my page here. I'm doing that by clicking stop and then page layout and selecting my page. I just want to put a normal calculator page bottom here. Okay. So if I want to solve this equation, menu 31 is the shortcut, and I can um, type that in. So two sine of 3x equals 1, comma. Now if I do not put a domain restriction here, I'm going to get general solutions. And we'll come back to general solutions in a moment because they can actually be quite useful. Um, however, if I had put a domain restriction on the end of my equation, um, I would have being given the, the solutions in this domain. So rather than retyping solve to sign, etc., I'm just going to use up on my touchpad and highlight the line and press enter and that will drop back down. And then I'm going to use the given that command, so control equals and this button here, given that. And I want to put in my domain restriction and my domain restriction is a restriction on x. So x is between and just be careful that when you type in your domain restriction, you actually use the variable that is given to you in the question. So if you're solving for um, A, for example, you put A here, not X. And I've typed PI, you can type PI or you can use the PI button and you will get this um, long list of um, solutions here. Now I, I chose this um, particular example because we have a um, period of 2 pi on 3 and so we're going to have quite a few solutions in this domain, 0 to, to 2 pi. And as you can see, if you have lots of solutions and you use the solve function, they're separated by or and then x equals or, x equals etc. So um, sometimes it's a bit hard to scroll all the way to the end of a list or the start of a list and particularly on a handheld in your exam, you don't want to be going across so control one will take you to the end of the list and control seven will take you to the top of the list. That is useful. Think about 
sort of the bottom of the list and the top of the list here. The other really useful um, command is using the zeros function instead of using solve. So zeros is very similar to solve. Um, we go menu, algebra and four. And we're going to type in our equation again, but our equation needs to be equal to zero. So in this case, our equation is equal to one, not equal to zero. We just transpose that, so subtract one from both sides, and then we have um, our equation to sine three x minus one is equal to zero, which we know is an equivalent equation. And you don't need to type um, equals anything. It knows that if you're using zeros, you mean this expression is equal to zero. And then we can put our domain restriction on here again. Um, I can copy and paste, or I can just type it in quickly. Um, and what we'll see here is our solutions come out in a beautiful set. Um, and particularly on uh, an, an exam, I would be encouraging you to use the zeros command where you can, rather than solve, as you just can see all of your solutions in a set like that. Um, a couple of the examples that I have coming up are questions that you will have seen or you will see on uh, exams where they ask you for the sum of the solutions or for how many solutions. Um, and so if we use the zero command, there's a little trick I can show you for those questions. Hopefully that has helped. Um, I did say I'd come back to the general solutions. Up here we were given um, general solutions. So uh, you can use the general solutions to generate solutions if you want to. So you can sub in various values of um, n. So remembering that n is an integer, you could work out um, what this is when n is equal to um, zero and you'll get one of your solutions. Uh, and there's another one here when n is zero. I will just mention this n1 business, that is just simply CAS syntax. So when you write on your paper, if you were using the calculator to generate general solutions, you would write 12n plus one multiplied by pi on 18. Don't write the n1 or n2 stuff. Um, that is just CAS syntax, it's not mathematically um, relevant. Okay, so we've done a basic solve equation. I might just show you, um, we can have a look at the graph. It, it wouldn't hurt um, to have a look at a graph if you were solving a trig equation. So true sine three x, um, then just make sure your CAS is in the right mode here. And um, we can put a line through at once. So I've just pressed tab to get myself back up here and I'm putting in a line at y equals one. And if I'm interested in all of the solutions between zero and two pi, as the question asked, I just want to see that part of the graph. So you can actually label your axis um, in increments from, uh, of pi or fractions of pi, which is really quite handy. So I'll just double click on this scale here and change that value. Um, I think changing the scale on a graph page is better than going into menu and window and trying to do it that way because um, if you're in here, you can't really sort of see your scale changing live. But if you are fiddling around with the scale up here, um, you can see it sort of changing and get the scale um, a bit better. Now I can actually put two pi and then press tab and I might make that minus two. Um, might make that minus one. Okay, we can see sort of a, a better view of our graph here between zero and two pi. And see this little value here um, that is set at point two, that means that every little marker is another point two. So that's point two, point four, point six, et cetera. If you double click on that, you can make it pi on six, for example. Um, and it will change your scale along the bottom. So that's that's certainly going to be helpful when you have to sketch a graph if you can change the, the, um, the horizontal scale. And I could have made that anything. I could make it um, pi on four or pi on three, um, whatever I wanted to do. So hopefully that is useful. We can see our solutions here. Um, there's six of them. I think if we come back to the um, list, oh good, there's six of them there too. So we can actually see our solutions here. Um, it's good to be able to see them, but remember if you try and actually find them using analyze graph intersection, you will get those values as um, decimal approximations instead of exact values. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at um, a question where we're asked about the number of solutions to an equation. Now we could again sketch the graph and um, we could, sorry I'm just seeing a question pop up to get from one 
go you to the next, you use the tab key. So just tab. Tab is just above control, and you can get around to each of them, and then you can just click escape. Okay, the number of solutions to this equation. So we could have a look at the graph. We could sketch um, true sine two x and sketch a horizontal line at y equals one and count how many solutions there are. Um, but I'm just going to show you a little bit of a trick here. If we were to use the um, zeros command, let me just get my page here. If we were to use the zeros command, so menu and then algebra and um, zeros, and this equation is two sine two x equals one, so minus one equals zero, you need the comma x there. And then we can put in our domain zero to seven pi. This is something you'd want to be practicing a fair bit, not, not trying to learn it for the first time in an exam. Um, there we go. Now, that is a lot of solutions, and I did that on purpose. I made it a very, um, quite a large domain, 0 to 2 pi, and um, the period is, is pi. So there will be lots of solutions in there. Um, the ones of you who are, um, love this topic could probably have told me the answer without having to worry about doing this, but that's another matter altogether. Um, so let's see, we can count them, we can say one, two, three, four, etc. or we can actually use an inbuilt function that is count. So on the little book button, if you press C and scroll down or D and scroll up to count, um, or you can type that in. So on your non-QWERTY keyboard, you could type in C-O-U-N-T. Um, type count and then you press the up key and then enter, and then it will tell you how many values are in that set. I mean, just great values in there, how many solutions there are. Um, so that's, that's really handy. Um, you can use that for other types of functions, polynomial functions, for example, if you want to know how many roots they have. Um, that, is, that is quite handy. Okay, let's have a look at this example. Um, it's pretty common in exams to be asked about asymptotes uh, of tangent functions. And this particular question is asking us how many, um, what are the equations of the first three asymptotes where x is greater than zero? So we're assuming they mean the, um, the smallest x values, the first one after x equals zero, and um, then the next two after that. Now it's a multiple choice question, so um, that would be tech active. There are a few ways we can approach this. You could have a look at the graph, um, however, the asymptotes do not appear on the graph, so they won't be labelled on the graph. Um, so we we could do that. Um, that might be maybe a last resort. I'm going to show you something else. Uh, let's go to our um, normal calculator page that most of us would be working in here. Right now, there's actually a function called domain. So we recall that an asymptote is going to be where um, the function is undefined. And if you think back to your tangent ratio being um, sine theta over cosine theta, it, it's where the cosine of two x minus pi and three is going to be zero. So we can use our domain function in, in the book button again. We love this little book button. I didn't mention earlier, but um, when you hover over one of these functions, like I'm about to for domain, the syntax actually appears down the bottom and this can be really useful if you're in a stack or in an exam and you start stressing out about, oh, I've forgotten, what do I actually need to type in here? The syntax is there right for you. It's telling you to type in the expression and then type in the variable. So um, what that means is we can type in this, this whole expression, um, true tan, I'm just gonna, uh, I won't copy and paste because that's not fair. You find that harder on a, uh, on a handheld, so I'll type it back in. Um, comma x. Now, I didn't put a domain in. I didn't restrict my domain, so I'm getting my general solutions. And so what I need to do is think, okay, well this function here has a period of pi on two, and they want the first three asymptotes for the function. So we can probably work out there that the first three asymptotes will lie between zero and three lots of pi on two. So we can put a domain in here, um, to say our x value is going to be between zero and three pi on two. If you weren't sure about that, just extend your domain a little bit. 
more. You could make a domain of you know, four pi or whatever. Um, but we just want the first three, um, sorry, I typed three instead of two. Um, we just want the first three asymptotes, okay? So what we can see here um, is that the domain of the function is all real values excluding, well, sorry, all real values within between zero and three pi on two, I should say, um, excluding pi on 12, seven pi on 12, and 13 pi on 12. And that means that our asymptotes are at x equals pi on 12, seven pi on 12, and 13 pi on 12, which is um, it's really nice. Now, another way you could have done that is um, using the zeros command. I'm gonna get straight to the top of that list by pressing control seven and change this to zeros and I will change this to cosine and I will um, get my values of x for which cosine of 2x minus pi and 3 is equal to zero which we know from the tangent ratio um, will mean that tangent is undefined because tan theta is equal to sine theta over so just different ways to approach the question, but um, certainly it's easy to use, uh, well easier I think to use one of these methods to find the equations of the asymptote than it is to just look at a look at a graph and try and work out whereabouts they are on a graph. It's, um, it's not you know, the most efficient way to do it. I don't think. Okay, um, so if I'm not going too fast, we might jump into another question. And um, this question is asking us to find the sum of the solutions. I might just mention, uh, if you want to use some of these screenshots for your bound reference, um, if you've got the computer software and you, for example, have just played around with this and you, you want this to be in your bound reference, um, you can press Control J, Control J, and Control J actually takes a screenshot for you. So um, we can see here that my little images are, have appeared. These are various screenshots that I've taken. Um, and they can be um, then copied and pasted into a, a Word document um, for your bound reference, which is really fantastic. So it saves you from handwriting, you know, press, solve, comma, X or anything like that. Okay, let's have a look at this question. We asked about the sum of the solutions. This is a fairly common question. Uh, question. So instead of asking you to find all of the solutions, they want you to find the solutions and then add them together, find the sum of the solutions. So um, I'm just going to split my page again and add a calculator page. And we can of course use our zeros command, so menu, algebra, and then zeros. And we type in four sign 2x minus 2 root 3. Remember that we don't need to put equals 0. It, it knows. Um, so that expression is equal to 0. We need to put our domain restriction in here. And a moment, sorry about that. And then we get our solutions. Now, um, like we could count them before, we can use another little shortcut that is the sum command. So in your catalog button again, we want SUM. So you can do S and um, scroll down. Or it might have been, <laughs> might have been easier um, to scroll up. And we press up. Probably quicker actually to type in SUM, even on a non qwerty keyboard. Um, up and enter. You don't need to copy and paste. You just press up and enter and it will add them together. So um, just on that, you can copy and paste in a, in a CAD. Um, control C and Control V will be um, copy and paste, but I think just highlighting and pressing enter is um, a really efficient way to do it. And that's useful. You saw me do it before when I made a mistake. I didn't have to retype the whole line of working out. I just copied it back down and edited, um, edited that. Okay, um, let's talk about application questions. Uh, the thing is, I wanted to keep this uh, webinar really focused on circular functions. 
rather than um, going into calculus. But as we know, by the end of the year, a lot of these, or even by mid-year, a lot of these questions will involve um, calculus type questions. So I haven't used anything about the rate of change of water or anything like that. I'm, I'm keeping this fairly basic, but hopefully you pick up some, some tips that you can use in your exam. Um, quite often these questions will be about some sort of rotation. So um, something that is cyclic, like voltage or um, you know the, the current changing or the temperature changing in the atmosphere or a position on a, on a wheel or something like that. Um, and the depth of water at a tide, uh, at a pier, sorry, is a pretty common sort of question. Um, one thing I would really encourage you to do with these questions is to use the assign command. So I'm working in a, in a notes page here. If I press control I and get my list, control I means insert. If I get my list of all my pages, you're probably more familiar with these two pages. Maybe if you do further maths, you might be sort of more familiar with these two pages as well. But in methods, we generally have been using calculator and graph. This notes page is a page that um, it's like a notepad, so you can type words. Um, I understand on your non-QWERTY keyboard that's a little bit difficult, but that's the type of page that I've used here. Now, to get anything mathematical happening in a notes page, you press Control M, Control M for math, and that will insert a math box. So, if I wanted to um, do some math, I could do that inside the math box. If I'm not inside a math box, it's just normal text. And so um, I've used an, a notes page here and I can go in my math box and change that equal sign to assigned, which is how we can define a function. So I press control and then the assign command there. Um, and now I am assigning my function. Now I have assigned that or defined the function without the domain restriction. I will use the domain restriction when I'm applying um, my understanding to answer specific questions, but I tend to not define the function with the domain restriction. Um, you can do that, so you could add a domain restriction on the end here and that would work, but I just tend not to do that. Um, one other tip is if you've got decimals in your function, I would tend, I tell my students to do this as well, just change it to um, a fraction. So, you know, if it was 1.7 or something and you're struggling with converting it, you're stressed about that, um, just put it over 10, um, 17 over 10. It just means your solutions will come out um, as exact values and you won't be in a position where you're getting decimals generated when you want your exact values. So I would try where you can to not define a function with decimals in it. Another little tip. Um, have a good look at the the variable, so depth is in meters, that's relevant, and um, time is in hours. So you really want to make sure, um, I don't think I've said that time's in hours, but I wrote the question, so time is in hours. Uh, you want to make sure that you have double checked that in case they ask you to give your answer to the nearest centimeter or something, and, um, and sorry, and you, um, you've given it the wrong um, unit. Okay. So if we were asked a series of questions about the depth over a 24 hour period, um, one thing we want to do is have a look at the graph. So control I and add a graph. And we can type in D because we've defined our function already. We don't need to retype the function, but we won't use D of T, we'll use D of X. Now that's because your graph page has already been set. Um, it has X here as the independent variable. You can't change that. So um, you just need to sketch your graph in terms of that. Uh, when we're answering questions on our SAP or our exam, we'll be very careful to write T, not X. Um, now, we can change our scale here again, double click here. I don't really need negative time. Um, I can change this, so I might make that 10. And I want to see the first 24 hours, so I might make that something like 26. And when you're happy with your scale, you can just click Escape and get out of that. Now there was a domain restriction, so um, here is where you might want to restrict the domain on the graph. Press tab and then jump back up um, behind the D of X and we can add our domain restriction here and say that we really just want to look at the graph um, between 0 and uh, 24 of our time. 
And now we can see a, a beautiful graph of D of T, not D of X. Um, and pretty common questions will be things like, um, when is the depth at its, um, you know, when is high tide, when is low tide, um, when is the depth, uh, what was our, when is the depth going to be five, five metres, um, for example. So if we were asked something about, okay, when, when is the depth of the tide five metres, um, we can certainly have a look at that on the graph. Um, so we can put in five, yeah, okay. And then we can see that there's a, a period where the depth is less than five and then at this point here, it is exactly five and then it's deeper than five and then it's exactly five again, etc. So um, you can find those intersection points using menu, analyze graph and intersection and just find those. Um, just a reminder that this will be a decimal approximation. So if you do want the exact values, you would need to use the solve function on your calculator. Um, and you need to find each of these ones separately. So when we use analyze graph and intersection, we just jump to the left of a point and to the right of a point, and we can see that. Um, you do want to make sure you're seeing enough decimal places here. So the settings for your calculator page are separate to your normal settings. Um, we can go into menu settings here and change your um, change your float here. Now, I, I usually have mine up really high. Um, it, it sort of you want enough decimal places that you're not going to incur a rounding error by by rounding something that has already been rounded essentially. Um, so you can at least see sort of different decimal. Um, you can see a lot of decimal points here, and then you can round um, correctly. If the question had said something like, um, "For how long is the depth? Um, for how long is the depth above five meters in the first 24 hours?" Then that's where using your calculator page in conjunction with your graph page is going to be um, really useful. We can solve where d of t is um, equal to five, for example, comma t. We will need to put a domain restriction on here, otherwise we'll be getting general solutions. So again, um, you want to make sure you're using the correct variable here. So we'll be saying where t is between zero and um, 24. And then you're going to get these exact values. Okay, so we want to click control enter in order to get them into um, decimals. And now we can interpret the question. So we can see from our graph, it's between these these two points, um, so we can find the difference in time between this number and this one here, um, and you know we can do that pretty easily using subtraction. I'm sure we're all proficient with um, subtraction, and then that's going to be the amount of time in hours, and we know that we can convert that to hours and hours and um, minutes. So we can take the decimal part; it's four hours, and um, multiply the portion of an hour that you have by 60, and we can see here, um, you know, four hours and 25.687 um, minutes. And don't forget that there were two times so that that was going to happen again over here in the 24 hours. Um, there'd be another equal um, interval in terms of time um, where the depth is uh, above five. So just keep that in mind. Um, sometimes the, the handheld doesn't handle even the computer doesn't handle solving um, circular function inequalities very well with the with the less than or um, less than or equal to sign. So use use common sense. Use the graph um, in conjunction with the solve function um, and and interpret the question. That's really what they're testing. That you can interpret the question with your solution. So we've hit three thirty. Um, hopefully you've gotten some tips and tricks and a um, little bit of advice and help through this webinar. Thanks for, thanks for joining. Um, if you do have any further questions, put them in the, the chat and we are absolutely more than happy to um, answer them. So yeah, good luck. Good luck year 12. Have a great day.